Hello, everyone. You're listening to the LockingYourSuccess.com Trading Performance Podcast with Master Trading Performance Coach John Locke, where it's all about real traders, real problems, and real coaching. Today, I'd like to share an interview I had. But before I do, I'd like to say a warm thank you to Sylvia, her crew, and her listeners. I had a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed it immensely. Now, without further ado, I'd also like to share it with you. So here is the interview. Enjoy. Read out his trading bio, and then we can start today's trading podcast. Since establishing Lock in Your Success, LLC, in 2006, John Locke has emerged as a leader in the trading industry. He has authored more than a dozen option trading strategy courses and created many career-changing trading performance programs, which are used by traders around the globe. To support his students, John Locke started a trading community where hundreds of talented traders share ideas, have access to educational resources, attend live, and have access to thousands of hours of recorded trading webinars. In his pursuit to become an expert in the study of human behavior and trading performance, he achieved multiple master certifications in transformational coaching neurolinguistic programming and hypnosis and is deeply involved in many other self-improvement sciences. He uses these skills to help traders conquer fears, overcome anxiety, and break through the barriers holding them back from performing their best. Thank you, John Locke, for gracing our trading lounge again. Well, thank you, and thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. And since we've interviewed you a couple of times in the past, maybe you can just refresh our memories on how you got started, that you had start in the trading industry, and I know you trade options. Maybe you can touch on that, what trading options are, and then we can we can begin the podcast. Sure. I, I think I probably got involved like a lot of people and looking for a way to maybe make some money, and I was exposed to trading through a seminar that I went to, and I ended up just falling in love with trading, and uh, I started, I think, probably like a lot of people Usually they get into this business and they they do some sort of directional trading, um, usually with some sort of an indicator for stocks. And then eventually things don't turn out as well as they think. So people tend at that point, they tend to go to shorter term and shorter term trading, which I did. I ended up getting into directional trading with you know short term with like futures and so forth and doing day trading and when that didn't work out the way that i wanted to we ended up going and switching over to what we call options and options are uh, well i guess a way that you could leverage your trading and i got into that and then from there we did what we call directional options where we used options to try and take advantage of the market market's directional moves and then from there I eventually went to what we call non-directional or income trading, where we buy and sell options at different price levels in order to make money through the passage of time rather than price movement. And that's, I ended up being very good at that. And here I am. (laughs) All right. And maybe I can ask why you narrowed down to options trading as a an asset for you and maybe for someone who's listening in for the first time, what the ideal capital size would be for people looking to trade in options full time. Right. So the thing with options is there, <laughs> there's a lot of options. We have many, many different ways that you can trade options. Like I said, you can take advantage of a, a directional moves. In other words, you can use it to leverage moves. So, you know, to buy a hundred shares of SPY, for example, or the uh, SPY is the ETF for the S&P 500, it's going to cost you a lot of money. It's going to cost you know tens of thousands of dollars. But you, know, you can buy an option that you can make the same amount of money with for maybe a few hundred dollars. And that you know, allows you what we call a lot of leverage. And you can do that at a very a relatively low risk. So sometimes we can make thousands of percents with options if you're doing them directionally. The challenge with that is that you need the move to happen the direction you want it, and you need it to happen fast. Because one of the things with options is you t- you pay a premium, or what we call a time premium, in order to be able to use the option, and it lowers your probability of winning. 
So you, it makes it so you're much more leveraged, so you can make more money with a less money. But at the same time, the likelihood of you actually making money drops significantly. So one of the things we did is we flip it around. We sell that option instead of buy the option. We take the time premium in, and then you know we hope the market essentially doesn't move in that direction. And like I said, one of the things you could do with options is you can build a position where you're covered with your risk with price movement, and you can make money as long as the market doesn't go too far against you. You generally can make money. Of course, there's the losing scenario where it goes too far against you, but we've learned to manipulate that really well. And I forgot your question, <laughs> but if you could bring that on again. Yeah, what, what would be the ideal capital size for options trading for someone who's looking to trade them full time? Oh, full-time, full -time. right. And yeah. that's, that's going to depend on the type of trading that you do. I mean, the type of trading we do, you know, you're looking at, you can, like if you do regular directional trading, you're looking at trading, what they say, like a, a t so many tenths of a percent of your account that you, that you put in a trade. When we do our type of trading, you know, we, we will basically have the whole account active at the same time. That being the case, you know, a lot of times we're working with, say, a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars with that. And again, it depends on how much you want to make, but we'll make somewhere between, and this is kind of like an average, somewhere between 20 and 30% on our account a year. So you have to do the math and figure out how much you know money that you need to survive, so to speak. And then and run it off of that. All right, and I know you're also a performance coach in addition to be, to you being a trader, an options trader. So for for new traders and also for seasoned traders, maybe you can tell us what the terms NLP, neuro linguistic programming, mean, what hypnosis is, and why traders should take them seriously for you know as as they're beginning their trading career. Well, ultimately, when traders begin their trading career, they're looking for techniques, they're looking for trades, they're looking for indicators, something that is going to take advantage of the marketplace. Ultimately, whether they make money or not does not really depend on the technique. So when I was doing my trading journey, for example, the reason I do the style of trading I do is primarily because this style of trading is when I finally became successful at trading and started making money consistently. Therefore, that's where I stopped. And you have other people who come in, they do different types of trading. And at some point they become, you know, if they stick with it long enough and they're doing the right things, they eventually become profitable at some point. And usually when they do, they say, they kind of stick with that type of trading. And it's the same thing here. But the, re but the reality is you can make money in any type of trading. Whether you do or not depends more on your psychology and how you're approaching the market and your expectations within that trading than it does the type of trading you're doing. So in other words, it's not how much you know that determines whether you make money or not. It's your behavior that determines whether you make money or not. And your behavior is completely dependent on your psychology. And when I figured this out, I happen to be doing the type of trading I'm doing. The reason I started making money or being profitable as a trader is because, you know, I'm trading and I'm doing all these things. And as I look at what I'm doing, when I was going through that process, I started this as a success coach and I knew NLP and I knew hypnosis and so forth. And at some point I realized, Hey, I'm doing all the things that I tell people not to do when they're trying to start a business, when they're trying to get into a relationship, when they're trying to do all the other things in life that require, you know, uncertainty and, and a certain mindset, no matter what you do in life, if you want to be successful at it, there's certain things that you have to do, there's certain behaviors you have to have. And if I look, look at what I was doing with trading, the reason I wasn't getting anywhere is because I was doing unbeneficial behaviors. Once I decided or noticed I was doing that and applied my success principles to trading, boom, everything comes together, everything takes off. I start coaching traders. It doesn't matter what they're doing, you know, what type of trade they're doing. They get the right mindset. Yes, you have to have certain skills. You have to, you have to know certain things, but realistically, the type of trading doesn't matter as long as you know the fundamentals of the trading style that you're doing. Whether you actually make it or not is going to be very dependent on your behavior, and your behavior is dependent on your psychology, 
right? So when we start talking about NLP, NLP, that's short for Neuro Linguistic Programming. And Neuro Linguistic Programming is essentially being able to change the way that you think and feel about things, right? So it, it's understanding how, you, the, how the mind works and being able to go in there and actually change those things. And we can do that through the techniques that NLP has. And NLP also relies heavily on hypnosis. And hypnosis is not what most people think it is. It's not sitting there and going to sleep and having somebody command you and tell you to bark like a dog. It's more like understanding, again, the way the mind works and the fact that we're almost always in what we call a trance. So a trance is when you're basically your unconscious mind is controlling what you're doing. So we each have a you know, part of us that we're conscious of. In other words, you can hear me now, you're listening to my voice and you're aware of that. You know, when you do something very intentionally, you're using your conscious mind. When you do something and you're not really thinking about it, like breathing, walking, driving somewhere, you've driven a hundred times, you know, you're mad or in any aroused emotional state, you're in, a, in what we call a trance. And with hypnosis, we put people in trances and we, we control their trances and we use that to talk to their unconscious mind or the part of their mind, again, that is in control of doing things that you're generally not aware of. Okay. Okay. And then assuming I'm, I'm your client and I come to you for the first time, maybe I'm a Forex trader or I trade any other current, uh, any other asset class and, and I tell you for this, the past two weeks, I've been having a losing streak. Where do you start, say, for example, for people who'd be interested in your coaching? Or maybe my performance is up and down, up and down. It's not something consistent when it comes to my p &L. Well, you know, for the first thing that we need to look at is what they're doing mechanically in the market. Is what they're doing making sense? Do they have some sort of an edge in the marketplace? Are they reading the marketplace and so forth? So a lot of people come into this business and the reason they're having trouble is because of their expectations. They expect to win all the time, right? And when you ask people, do you expect to win all the time? They say, oh no, I don't expect to win all the time. And that may be true at a conscious level. In other words, they may think that they don't expect to win all the time, but at an unconscious level, they do expect to win all the time. And one of the things we do with NLP is we determine what they really think, right? So we have a habit of lying as human beings. Not only do we lie to other people, but we lie to ourselves. And you may really think you expect to lose, but really what you really expect is determined by the way you behave and what you do. We've all talked to other people where they said one thing, but you know they believe something else. And this is what we go into with coaching is, is, is what are their actual beliefs? If they're winning and they're escalating their capital size and they're getting really excited, right? And then they take a loss and they get scared and they change their trading strategies and they are all upset about it and they now they can't trade with a large amount of money, then that's basically telling me that they do expect to win all the time right? They're, they're basing their confidence level off of recent trade results, which is basically the kiss of death in trading. You know, if you're, if you're basing your confidence level off whether you've won the last four or five trades or whether you've lost the last four or five trades, then that's going to be problematic for you because what's going to happen is you're going to go in, you're going to win, you're going to escalate your capital, you're going to lose all that money, you know, that you've, you know, say you go on a winning streak, Usually people, when they go on a winning streak, they start with a small amount of money. By the time that they ended their winning streak, they have a large amount of money. And then because they've placed their confidence on the wins, they think that they've made good decisions because they've won, which isn't true in trading. So their confidence level sky high, they're trading this large size, then boom, they come into a losing streak and then they drop their capital down like crazy to nothing. And, you know, first of all, when they come into the losing streak, they, they've lost all the money they've made in the winning streak because they were trading so large. You know, now their capital is destroyed. They say, I've traded for, you know, six months and I've lost money. And their trading size tanks down, their confidence level goes away, and then they start desperately jumping at other things until, like, or they find somebody who's been winning recently and they go over and do that. And that's, this, you know, what we call the circle of doom in trading. It's just this, this constant period of time where you're, 
you're going through winning streaks, jacking your capital, going through a losing streak, and dropping your capital. The reality is, is we're all going to go through these cycles where we make money and where we lose money. And whether or not we make money or a lot of, or lose money a lot of times is or, or win or lose a trade is dependent on luck. So you know, there's certain factors with trading that you can control. There's certain factors you can't control. And you can't control whether you win or not. All you can control is whether you're doing a process that has an edge in the marketplace and following that process fairly consistently. So first of all, we look at, does the person have the skills to trade this trade? You know, does he need to, is it a skill problem? Is it an expectation problem? Is he adapting to the marketplace, right? So, you know, we're going to come in with some indicators, right? And, or whatever it is you're using to get in and out of your trades, right? Some sort of a trading plan. You're going to come in with some sort of a trading plan. Whatever trading plan you have is not going to make money in all markets, right? We have different types of markets and different types of strategies do well in different types of markets and they do poorly in different types of markets. And, you know, so you have to make sure you have a strategy that, you know, first of all, realize that there is no one strategy that works in all markets. Second of all, you need to have the skills to trade each, you know, you have to be able to identify the market you're in and you have to have trading plans or skills that you can use in each type of market, right? If they're doing that, that's great. Now it comes down to, is your plan appropriate for the market? If the answer is no, then we have to work at the level of being able to identify the market and applying the right plan to the market. If the answer is yes, they understand this stuff, they're just not doing it, and then we have to look at why they're not doing it. And again, that goes back to maybe expectations. They expect one thing to work all the time or they expect to win all the time or their emotions are, are riding up and down and, and riding crazy. We talk about changing their perspective and their expectations in the marketplace. If that's the issue or whatever the issue is, we, we work with that directly. So okay. we're, we're trying to find the root cause essentially. Okay. Okay. That's good. Like you're finding the diagnosis for the for their problem first. And for those, for the traders who maybe for a reason or another, or another they don't have access to a coach like yourself or someone who they can call like a mentor also in trading, how can they individually improve on their own trading performance without like a coach? It's the same process. You do this thing called self-coaching. And, you know, one of the wonderful things about nowadays is there's so much information online that you can do all kinds of, of, of self-coaching. I think the first thing is to if you're having challenges, realize that when people come in here, they think they're having a challenge because they tried a technique and the technique doesn't work. So they think they need new techniques. So I try this indicator and yeah, I made some money for a little while and then it stopped working, right? So I'm going to go do this other indicator. And then that's maybe works for a while, maybe it doesn't, but it stops working and they go to the next indicator or the next trade or the next style of trading or whatever. They, they just move on to the next thing, move on to the next thing. If they're doing that, then like I said, you have to, you have to stop, stop for a minute and, 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 and think to yourself, well, am, am I expecting this to work all the time? Am I aware that there are different types of markets and that this strategy isn't going to work in all those types of markets? You know, do I have different strategy for each, for each type of market? Uh, you know, and, you know, ultimately, whether you make money in the marketplace or not isn't has nothing to do with how much you know. It's how well you're adapting to the marketplace. I mean, if you take a look at an example is I'm trying to learn to dance, right? And I've been trying to learn to dance for many years. And I go in and I can do a lot of techniques. I know a lot of steps. I know a lot of different types of dancing. And, you know, I go out and we go to dance or whatever and I, you look at these people and they dance really really well and you and you and you say geez you know i, I want to be able to dance like that and i go in and i try and learn more techniques and i try and more learn more techniques 
And I'm like, well, why am I not getting any better? And it's because there's a whole other side of dancing than the techniques. There's people who can come in and they listen to the music and they get the feeling for the music and they can just move and they look wonderful, right? They're having a good time. They're having fun. And they don't know even a quarter of the techniques that I know. They don't know the different types of dances that I know. But they can just come in and they can do it. And it's the same thing with trading. You don't have to know a whole lot of techniques and stuff in order to trade well, in order to make money well. You just have to know or get a feeling for the market, understand the market changes, and understand that you you have to improvise and do different things when the market is behaving differently. If you can get that, you don't need to know 25 different types of trading. You don't need to have you know 17,000 indicators or, or all this crazy technical stuff you know realize there are traders out there who probably don't know all that much about trading you know as far as the 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 mechanics the techniques and you probably know a lot more than they do but they're doing tremendously well and you're doing terribly and you know your (laughs) and your approach here is just to go find another technique just go find another technique well that's not where the magic is you know you have to actually go back and you have to actually go through and be able to experience the emotional range of the wins and losses without, you know, getting overly excited about it or overly depressed about it and go in there and just trade, right? Just feel the market and apply tools to the market that are appropriate at the time. And that takes, that's a little bit of a nuance. And a lot of traders, a lot of people who get into trading tend to be more engineering or more analytical type of people. But the reality is, you need to be able to get in touch with your emotions and get a feeling for what's going on in the market and how it breathes and, and how it moves back and forth. And when you can get that, then you can trade really well because remember the market is not mathematical. There's a lot of mathematics in the market, but it, it doesn't move mathematically. It moves based off of emotion, fear and greed. And if you can get, if you can get tuned into the fear and greed of the traders, And the market, you'll understand how the price moves. And when you understand how the price moves, then, well, you can do whatever you want, right? You can make as much money as you want. It's just a matter at that point of how do I take advantage of that price movement. Yeah. Thank you for that explanation. And having coached very many traders uh, on your, based on your experience and your profession, what would you say is the average time that one needs to invest in learning? so as to start making a decent living out of trading? It all depends. It's not how long you take. It's how long it takes you to get your lessons that you need to learn. You know, I've seen people in this business come in for this business for three months and make a lot of money and continue to make money for very long periods of time. And I've seen people in this business for, you know, I've been in it since 2006 and I've seen, and I know people who have been in it probably 20 years before I got in it, and they're still losing money. So it's it's again it's it's more it's a lot more about how fast you learn to manage your emotions and get a feeling for the marketplace than it is a certain amount of techniques that you know. Okay, and so 15 years later, uh, being in the trading industry. What would you classify as a good trade? Okay, this is great. So I love this question because most people will say, well, a good trade is the trade that I made $20,000 on or whatever. But the reality is a trade can be a good trade even if you lose the trade. A good trade is when when you go in the market, you had a good risk reward ratio, you had a high probability of winning and you took that trade and you got in when you should have got in and you got out, when you should have got out, the result of that trade, whether you could have lost money on that trade and it was still a good trade. And this is probably one of the keys because what traders do is they, t- they tend to use the amount they won or lost on the last trade as feedback on whether they did the right thing. And when you do that, the problem with that is if you made money in a trade, it doesn't mean you did anything right necessarily. You could have randomly entered entered a stock or whatever, right? And 
all of a sudden the stock takes off and you make a bunch of money on the stock, right? Had nothing to do with skill, could have been oversized, right? And, you know, you could have just exited randomly with, with nothing and, and made a lot of money. That's the great thing about trading is, you know, you can go in, you can, you can do this stuff and you can make money. You can also go in the market and you could have had a very nice high probability entry. You could have been sized well and done everything perfectly and lost, right? So you have one person who won this trade and takes, takes and he did everything irresponsibly. Maybe he, had, he took on too much risk and, and he did everything irresponsibly and he won the trade. Therefore, he thinks he did something right. Therefore, he can increase his trading size going forward. Right. And then if he's lucky and he wins the next trade being, you know, basically foolish or, or doing stupid things, you know, at some point he's traded, he's very large in the marketplace and then the luck turns against him and, you know, know, his risk is way out and all this other stuff. And he takes these, this huge loss. He's trading poorly. He's doing bad trades. And then you have this other person, you know, he's being responsible well, but my point being, if you're looking at your past res- your results of the trade to determine whether you did anything good or not, you know, you're not looking at the right thing. You need to look at the process. You need to ask yourself, am I doing the processes that are going to make me money over time? Am I keeping my risk in check? Am I taking good risk reward ratios with my trade? You know, uh, is the the market likely to move in the direction that I'm thinking? And if you always keep your risk reward and your probability ratio straight and you're you're trading with the appropriate amount of risk, you're taking good trades. If you're not, you're not taking good trades. The result of the trade is irrelevant, actually. All right, all right. And then for for traders who've also been in the game for quite some time, does intuition play any role to a trader's emotional intelligence to be able to determine the market feel? And should one rely on intuition while trading? Well, see, that's that's a good question. Okay, I'm going to stop here for now. What I'd like to do is let you absorb the information that you got in the podcast today. And then we're going to have part two of this, which gets more in depth on the next podcast. Also, be sure to check out our trading performance membership and register to receive any update that we have regarding the Trading Performance Podcast, free webinars, and our Trading Performance membership so that you too can skyrocket your trading and produce fantastic results in your life. Thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you on the next Trading Performance Podcast.